Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Itch here and today we are casting a third game between Strat Games and Cyphos in their Best of 5 series. Now do note that the Best of 5 series isn't exactly cast in the order they're played. And due to real life time constraints on my end, not every battle will make their way into the videos. That's why this will be the last game I cast in the series, still I'll be summing up the remaining battles quickly in the end of the video. Now this battle today will be a full on battle replay between the two players. The reason is that this Skaven build right here is something I have always wanted to showcase. From Strat Games here, a full on Skaven mobility build, a Red Hiram if you will. I've played against Strat Games in a casual battle with him using this build and suffered a devastating defeat. This time we shall see how it performs in a more competitive environment. For the army build here, it is a full on, actually 99% mobility. Not full on because we have some slower poison wind globe ideas here, but the rest of the army is quite swift and agile. Night runners, vanguard deployed, and skaven slaves with their slings. Also, a bunch of red ogres mixed in with wolf reds. The army support are a bunch of high mobility characters as well. Packmaster, chieftain on a red ogre, and also a kick claw on his hamster wheel. A Kick Claw not bringing the fullest load out today with only unlimited power, brass orb, and a single spell that is Flensing Ruin. A very effective direct damage spell especially against single entities. Now for the High Elf army here expecting more of an artillery box, there are some Shadow Warriors in front, a great tool to pick apart the box from afar, and then of course a couple Eagle Claw Bolt first to counter the Skaven artillery. And then a bunch of anti-infantry rangers, great for clearing up Skaven Chav in melee. There's not a lot of slaves to fight in melee, but there are still quite a bit of wolf rats for them to cut down with their dual swords. Hidden in the forest are the High Elf Cavalry, Ilarian Reavers, two of them in fact, and a single Silver Helm with shields. On the other flank protecting the artillery, a single Ilarian Reaver and a ranger. Leading the army is an Archmage of Death, bringing Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna, a very devastating spell against high entity count units, perhaps a counter against the possible council guard. The remaining unit would be a Life Mage for some emergency healing and that's it for the army builds. Let us enjoy some proper tournament action. This battle happened in the map Blue Reach River, where there is a bunch of tree belts on each side of the battlefield. So, Strike Games will be using the cover of vegetation here to advance his army, taking cover from all these high elf missiles, the eagle claw bolt first, and the shadow warriors. Now, with all these mobility, the game pace would be quite fast. That's why I'll be doing less close up in the battle and try to keep track of everything. Now in the front line here, due to the Shadow Warriors shooting exposing their position, the Wolf Reds will be quickly charging in, trying to run down the High Elf skirmishers, forcing a response from the Illyrian Reavers, but a very nice retreat from Strat Games here pulling back the threatened Wolf Reds and charging in another unit of Wolf Reds, this time with poison slowing down the Illyrian Reavers and using the slightly faster 95 speed of the Wolf Reds to pick away a few Illyrian Reaver models with the help of the Pack Master. On the side here, there are some Illyrian Reavers being spotted, and due to the forest terrain slightly debuffing their speed. The Wolf Rats will be able to catch up with them and a counter charge is needed. The Reavers will be making a quick U-turn facing the Wolf Rats head on, followed up by a Silver Helm charge. But then Strike Games also has his own reinforcement. The Red Ogres are quickly hopping into combat using their armor piercing to pummel every single unit in the vicinity. Now back to the front line, the Wolf Rats are swarming some Rangers and Illyrian Reavers. The Rangers taking quite a bit of damage is routed by the terror from the Brute Horror. On top of that, a Flancing Ruin is dropped onto the blob here, draining away the health of both the Rangers and the Illyrian Reavers. Despite not having any single entities in the area, Cavalry having quite a bit of HP on their unit models means that the damage from the spell isn't exactly wasted. Also, a Brass Orb just routing a bunch of Rangers with the sheer amount of damage and a Kick Claw is being counter punched by a combination of Spirit Leech and the Precision Fire from the Eagle Claw Bolt for forcing him to retreat back into the trees to take cover. Now with the mobility advantage in the Skaven army here overloading everything in the forest, the Illyrian Reavers will be forced to retreat and intercept these Red Ogres who are compromising their Shadow Warriors, while the Skaven Red Harem will continue their pursuit with their combination of Red Ogres and Wolf Reds, overloading all these Illyrian Reavers who are quite fragile in melee combat due to their lack of armor. Good thing for the High Elves is that the Shadow Warriors skirmishing firepower is routing off some Red Ogres. 
But the problem is, the High Elves are making a fatal mistake. The Archmage is staying for too long in melee combat on the ground. This isn't always a bad idea since the Archmage on Eagle does have terror to route off the Skaven infantry. But at this point she definitely overstayed her welcome and is now double teamed by the Packmaster and Chieftain. Now Syphos instead of pulling her out of combat charges her even deeper into Skaven formations, successfully routing off a bunch of Skaven slaves and the uh, Poison Wind Globadiers. But it also plunges her even deeper into the surround of Skaven units, completely isolating her from the support of her own troops. Being double teamed by Skaven heroes, the Archmage will be shattered, putting the High Elves in a massive disadvantage as they now lack the options to kill off the single entities. In the forest, the Skaven has established a dominance with their sheer number of mobility. The Wolf Rats with the help of a Kick Claw will quickly clean up the remaining Ilarian Reavers. More Wolf Rats are also returning from routing or from chasing enemy units and will be overwhelming the High Elf left flank. The Shadow Warriors are still firing but there are no longer any melee units to provide that buffer and protect them from enemy mobility. In contrast, the Skaven Skirmishers, the Skaven Slave Slingers and the Poison Wing Globadiers are now resecured by all their Wolf Rat and Red Ogre units. As a result, the Reavers who are trying to disrupt the Skaven Missile Advance will be quickly beaten back. Shadow Warriors still firing valiantly but then the eyes of these Wolf Rats are set onto the rather squishy High Elf Skirmishers. Three units in total are charging straight into these Shadow Warriors. They're not full health for sure, but they still have a lot of models. With the sheer numbers advantage and the support of a kick claw, the Wolf Rats will be feasting on the valuable Aster Flesh. The missile game doesn't favor the High Elves either, with the sheer amount of Slinger Pebbles wrecking havoc in their front lines. And of course, the Globity is doing some very cost-effective damage with their Poison Wind effect, quickly deleting the health on these expensive Shadow Warriors. And with the High Elf frontline faltering, Strike Games is pushing harder and harder with his Red Hiram. More and more Shadow Warriors are compromised and shut down by the abundant Skaven mobility, while the High Elf struggles to shut down the Skaven missiles just like these Reavers, getting absolutely wrecked by the Overwatch fire from two Skaven Slave Slinger units and the Poison Wing Globadiers. At this point, there is not much the High Elves can do as all of their units are on the run. The only healthy unit, the Rangers, are basically a sitting duck in front of the superior mobility and missiles of the Skavens right now. With no options to turn the battle around, Cyphos will be admitting defeat, giving Strike Games the victory of this battle. Now for a quick rundown of army performances, the combination of Red Ogres and Wolf Reds are very effective in dealing with the High Elf mobility, essentially a counterpick against the rather skirmishy army of the High Elves. And with all the pebbles of the Skaven Slave Slingers, they can actually trade quite cost effectively against the more expensive Shadow Warriors. As for the single entities here, definitely great performances from all these units as well. The two heroes managed to snipe out the Archmage. They not only have the melee stats to deal with the single entities, but also have the horror to terrify any high elf units with wobbly leadership, causing even more damage as they are routed and being chased from behind by the wolf rats. A kick claw dropping in some damaging abilities and spells, and that's basically it for the Skaven army. A very nice Skaven rush army with mobility spam to counteract enemy skirmishing firepower. As for the high elves here, the Shadow Warriors still earn some decent value, just not enough to earn back their cost. While the Eagle Claw Bolt Floor is really lacking the targets to shoot today. Most of the combat was happening within the tree line and a lot of the shots are actually mitigated by the vegetation. While the Rangers here being overloaded by a whole bunch of Wolf Rats, they are decent in melee for sure, but once they're overloaded by a combination of wolf rats with their poison and magic attacks, and then being terrified by the presence of monsters, they unfortunately cannot do much on the battlefield. While the Ilarian Reavers and the Silverhelms are simply overloaded by the sheer amount of red ogres and wolf rats, Archmage did some damage with Spirit Leech, but that's about it. Now with the army performances done, let's quickly go through the remaining two battles between Strat Games and Cyphos. One of the remaining games is a Vampire Red vs Cathay battle with Strat Games controlling the Vampire Coast and Cyphos controlling Cathay. In this game, Cyphos rocket artillery completely outclassed the mortars of Strat Games Vampire Coast. Strat Games tried to fight back with a monster plus bomber rush in the hopes of overloading the Cathay frontline and crack open the box. 
However, Cyphos managed to keep a tight control to the box and established an effective defense with his melee troops. Forcing Strat Games Monster, the Mongols and animated hulks who doesn't have the greatest armor to suffer massive attrition during the melee engagement. As a result, the Cafe peasants managed to stand firm, banishing the vile drowned dead back into the seas. The other game also involves Cafe, but this time it is played by Strat Games and Cyphos will be playing as the Dark Elves. While Strat Games is an adept player in mobility heavy builds, his static Cafe box isn't exactly the best with noticeable gaps in the front line and a rather sluggish response to mobility threats. Cypho's Dark Elves, after taking some noticeable losses at the beginning, managed to sneak through the Cafe defenses in a quick hurry and started pressuring all the missiles with his infantry and flyers. And during all this, Miao Ying was way too obsessed with sniping Malice, but the problem is Malice simply resets all her progress by transforming into Zarkin, going back to full health and becoming even harder to kill in melee. Combined with the activation of murderous prowess, the Dark Elf army managed to plow straight through the Cafe army, eliminating all the Cafe missiles and dividing and conquer the rest of the melee units. To quickly sum up this series, 5 games in total were played between Strike Games and Cyphos. Strike Games taking the first win with his Skaven Red Harem, and then Cyphos taking back one game with the superior Cafe artillery and boxing. In the third game, most of it was basically Marauders of Slanish mopping up state troops and the uh, Empire War wagons kiting away Hell Striders. So not exactly a lot to talk about there, but in the end, Aceso slapping the crap out of Boris Toddbringer, which you have seen in the previous video. In the fourth game, Cyphos with his aggressive use of the Dark Elf infantry overwhelmed the Cathay box, taking back a victory and forcing the match into a fifth game. For the tie-breaking final battle of the entire series, Strat Games went for Norska and Cyphos went for the Wood Elves, which is the very first battle I showcased in the series, the Wood Elf Melee Octagon. If you still remember, Strat Games struggled to break through the Wood Elf defensive box that is reinforced by a bunch of tree kins, allowing Cyphos to secure one final victory in the best of five. This concludes the match between Cyphos and Strat Games. A massive shout out to both players for bringing such exciting battles to the community. And viewers, if you want to see more tournament spotlight in the BBB Season 1 tournament, be sure to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for new videos. That's it for today and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.